The Saskatchewan party government has been attacking 2S LGBTQIA plus rights for years. Yesterday, Queen City Pride in my hometown of Regina announced that they are now banning Saskatchewan party members. And Prince Albert Pride has also announced they'll be following suit. And Saskatoon Pride has not yet decided, but they are considering a ban as well. The reason why is very simple. They are not allies. As the co-chair of Queen City Pride, Mirtha Rivera, said, quote, They are not our allies. An ally to us is somebody who will support us, who will be beside us, and will make us feel safe. And they don't fall into that category right now. Like, the Saskatchewan government rolled out a pronoun policy which is just outright unconstitutional. They used the notwithstanding clause in preemptively in order to force it through. And so, when the Saskatchewan party applied to participate in the parade as a walking group, they were rejected. And rightly so. They don't belong there. And Scott Moe has attended Pride before in 2018, where he didn't even get out of his car. True allyship, really. But I think this is a really important stance. You can't create laws targeting a group of people and then use them for a photo op. Like, they are literally fighting in courts against the rights of 2SLGBTQIA plus young people while applying to show up at Pride. This is a party with no principles, no beliefs, and no shame. But I do want to take this moment to highlight something really important. It's the Rainbow Equality Week of Action. And there are a lot of leaders out there taking the Equality Pledge. So if you can, take a moment to apply some pressure to push your MLA, MP, whatever it may be, to sign the Rainbow Equality Pledge. Let's all work together to defend equality and protect trans youth. Calgary Mayor Gio T. Gondek pictured here discussing women in politics very thoroughly. Like, if you need to know about Frauen in der Politik, she's got you. Anyways, you may remember the recall petition brought against her. Yeah, that's been a hilarious failure, even worse than he expected. So in order to remove Mayor Gondek, they needed 514,000 signatures. They got less than 70,000. About 5% of the total voters, and in reality they needed 40%. But there's another issue here. So in order to assess the validity of the signatures, they choose a random sample. For this big of a group, they needed 369 for the sample. And in that sample, the number of valid signatures was zero. There literally wasn't a single valid petition. So in reality, the total number of valid signatures brought against Jyoti Gondek was a goose egg. Amazing. Now, this petition was started by someone named Landon Johnston, who wanted to send a message to the mayor and council that Calgarians are upset. So what message does it send when literally no valid signatures show up? Like, how should they interpret this? And while this is very ridiculous and fun to make fun of, it was a colossal waste of money, over $30,000 spent verifying the petition. Like, real people had to put in real work on this. To verify the not real signatures. Just a real home run on every swing here. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau pictured here personally administering his new dental plan. Out of the way, amateurs. Hand me the drill. And that little scrapey thing they poke your gums with. Anyways, I've been pretty critical of the federal dental plan saying that it doesn't go far enough and it isn't universal enough. But I think it's important to highlight the successes too. Because it went national on May 1st, rolling out care to people over 70. And since then, 46,000 people have received dental care and 1.9 million seniors have been approved for the plan so far. This is transformative. That is a massive number of people receiving health care that they weren't receiving before. And in almost every case, people who went to see the dentists hadn't been going previously because they couldn't afford it. There were folks with very painful conditions like broken teeth, abscesses, and more. And that access to basic dental care is going to massively improve people's quality of life. Now, would I like this to be fully universal? Yes. Would I like it to be fully publicly administered? Yes. But at the end of the day, this is significantly improving access to oral health care for a massive number of people. No matter how you slice it, that's a good thing. Because there are a lot more people in a lot less pain this morning than there would have been a month ago. And this is very low cost for the benefit we get. It's $13 billion over the next five years, which is less than a battery plant.
The rats continue to flee the sinking ship as the Saskatchewan party has announced that two more current MLAs are not running for re-election, both of whom had already been nominated. And this is part of a larger trend with the SAS party that is bananas. Following the 2020 election, they had 48 MLAs. 22 of those will not be running as MLAs for the Saskatchewan party in the next election. Nearly half the party is gone. And there are a bunch of reasons. Ten have announced that they're just not running for re-election. They're just out. There's also two who face current criminal charges, although one had his charges stayed. Another who left to start her own party after lying via sticker. She wore an I got vaccinated sticker and had not got vaccinated, so she got kicked out of the party. Good old Queen Nadine Wilson. And you've got a number that lost their nomination races. Like, if you are a SAS party supporter, the party you are voting for in 2024 is going to look nothing like the party you voted for in 2020. It's going to be nearly half brand new candidates. Because everyone who can is getting out. They're going to spend time with their families and focus on their health. And more vague, unverifiable statements to cover up what they're really doing. Walking away from a party that's become increasingly extreme. And walking away before they get crushed in a provincial election. You don't leave a political position you've already been nominated for unless you have a very good reason. It's an Orca alert! As I have an Orca update. They're back, baby! The Orcas have sunk another yacht! As once again, in the Strait of Gibraltar, a yacht has been sunk by a pod of Orcas. Gang of Orcas? Squad of Orcas. Orca squad. As two people felt the yacht that they were on, the Alboran Cognac, get rammed by a group of Orcas, at which point it began taking on water. The two people were safely rescued, and the boat sank. Now, this potentially has something to do with the Orca subpopulation, given the name Gladys. It's a group of Orcas that were trained by one Orca, named Gladys, to tear apart boats. Why? Unclear. Seems like they're just having a good time. And since May of 2020, there's been more than 700 interactions with orcas. And before you come here trying to say, oh, what about the people with their yachts? There were two people on this yacht, the Alboran Cognac, a rental yacht. It has three bathrooms. There were two people on a yacht with three bathrooms. Let's take that in for a second. Although I do have some bad news. For starters, the boat was only rated a 9.2 out of 10. Horrific stuff, really. But the bad news is that if you go to the rental website, unfortunately no results are found. They appear to have lost track of the boat. May I suggest the bottom of the Mediterranean? Ontario Premier Doug Ford, pictured here hearing someone in the other room open his bag of treats. He comes a run and it's adorable. Anyways, he's been doing everything he can to hide from you how bad things are in Ontario. Like when Global News submitted a Freedom of Information request trying to find out how many doctors and nurses that Ontario needs to hire by 2032. Doug Ford fought to hide that information. Then the same request got put in by the Canadian press, and it got approved. Because Freedom of Information in Ontario is nonsensical, which is its own far deeper issue. But today I want to highlight the number of nurses that we're going to need in Ontario, because it's a lot. The Ontario government's own internal numbers show that there are going to be 33,200 nurses and 50,853 personal support workers short by 2032. That's why they're trying not to tell you. Because they're predicting a massive shortage and doing everything they can not to address it. Like, in order to have 33,000 more nurses by 2032, we need to be getting training infrastructure in place now. Like, where are they going to come from? There are not 30,000 free nurses wandering around the world. Doesn't work like that. And same with personal support workers. These are skilled professions. Like the government is just trying to hide the problem from you so that they don't have to address it. And so that later on, private healthcare can sell you a solution. But private healthcare is going to need that many nurses too. Where are they going to come from? We are not near the end of a nursing shortage. We are at the beginning. It is only going to get worse. The Ontario government is doing everything they can to avoid addressing it. This is such a common bit of pearl clutching. This person saw that the Saskatchewan party is being barred from attending pride parades in Saskatchewan. And they said, oh, I thought pride people were about inclusiveness. Yeah, they are. And so if there is somebody who is actively fighting against inclusiveness, they're not invited to the party. 
It's called the paradox of tolerance. We cannot tolerate the intolerant. But also, it's people refusing to be used as props. The Saskatchewan Party has been directly attacking the 2SLGBTQIA plus community. They called it an emergency session of legislature to restrict rights. And then they want to show up to the parade and act like they're allies. No. This is Queen City Pride refusing to be used as a prop. If they want to be included, then they need to be about inclusiveness. Bullies don't get invited. And if you're more concerned about the fact that they're not invited than you are about why they weren't invited, that really just tells me that you only view Pride as a prop as well. Somewhere to go and get a political photo taken. Not much else. This person, and so many like them, just yelled LIBERAL at me in all capitals. And yes, that is an insult, but not for the reason you think. People on the left tend to get annoyed when you call them liberals, because they are very much not liberals. Not because we're, like, somehow ashamed of it. Like, the idea of calling someone a liberal is an insult fascinates me. There's literally a political party called the liberals. They call themselves the liberals. How do you think it insults them? The only people it's insulting to are people who you know aren't liberals. You're calling me a liberal to piss me off because you know I'm not a liberal. You know I don't support the liberals or identify with them. So you're calling me a liberal to annoy me. So you know I'm not a liberal. I know I'm not a liberal. So why are you calling me it? <laughs> What's your actual goal here? Also, define liberal. Because I'm certain you don't know what it means. So right, right down there in the comment section. Buttons over there. What is a liberal? Enlighten us. This person was in the middle of telling a story about how they store all of their farts in jars in their basements when they accused me of taking statements out of context. Can you believe the nerve to suggest that I would interfere with his time with his fart jars? Come on. One thing to note, whenever I respond to comments, you can just click the comment to go back and see the original context. Like, how out of context do you think I can take these comments? You can see the context. If you weren't so busy with your fart jars, you'd know that. This person, like so many others, is whining that the Saskatchewan Party MLAs were not invited to Saskatchewan's Pride events this year. Complaining that it's not inclusive. Weird that that same concern wasn't brought forward when the SAS Party brought forward laws that actually work against inclusion. So, I offer a very simple solution. If the Saskatchewan Party really want to attend Saskatchewan's Pride events, why don't we set up, like, I don't know, a booth, maybe an enclosure. Should probably be some fences, maybe some barbed wire. Just have them sit in there and provide an open forum for community feedback. Members of the community can come, talk to them, share their opinions and beliefs. And if the SAS party actually believe what they're saying and stand by it, they can respond to questions and concerns. If they want to attend Pride, they can hang out in their enclosure and answer questions and face people and look them in the eye. But they don't want to do that. They just want to wave from the window of a car and never even step out. Because it's not about inclusion, it's about appearances. This person's pointing to one of my favorite things that happens on TikTok. The angrier somebody gets at me, and the more that they comment about how much they hate me, the more of me they see. The more they interact with my comment, the more that TikTok just bombards them with it. So while I am blissfully unaware of their existence, my existence just makes them matter and matter. They're sitting in their phone seething. The two beard guys there again! He's a liberal or a Marxist or something I don't like. Rawr! And then they just see it again and again. It delights me. The algorithm is a cruel mistress. This person says my followers are liberal and liberals of a fear her flock together. First of all, not a liberal. Most of my followers aren't either. But there's only one creature I flock with. My good pal. Mordecai. Right, Mordecai? He agrees. 